Hello and welcome to the Face of Pro-Life. Today I am speaking with a remarkable woman, April Burke. Thank you for joining me today, April. Um, you've been on the, uh, in the past, but um, just to remind our viewers, could you tell us a little bit about um, your birth and uh, the remarkable um, resilience you have <laughs> for life? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. And uh, well, I was born four and a half months premature and I weighed one pound 13 ounces. Oh, that's so tiny. That is so tiny. It's very tiny. It's hard to even imagine like when I tell people they're like, really? One pound 13 ounces? They, they're like, oh, you know. Oh, how precious. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically as a result of that, I have one disability out of many disabilities that I could have had, which is legal blindness. Wow. Um, which is which was caused by detached retinas. Retinopathy of prematurity is the uh, correct term for it, and, uh, which allows me to only see light and shadow. So the doctors really had, um, were really leery uh, when you were born of your chance of survival, right? They were very, they, doctors told my mom that I was gonna be, that it would be possible that I could end up um, having mental, mental challenges, um, cerebral palsy, not walk, not talk, all kinds of different disabilities on top of blindness. And the only one that I ended up with was blindness. Wow. So I see that as very lucky. And I try not, I try very hard not to look at myself as disabled or handicapped. So, I mean, faced with this prognosis, your, your uh, parents were very um, scared. Very scared, yeah, because doctors kept on saying all these things. and. I was hooked up to all these machines and I had to stay in the hospital for three months from the time I was born. Born at four and a half months early, I stayed in the hospital for three months because I had to wait until I was five pounds to go home. Wow. Wow. So, so you, got, I mean, you went home actually before your due date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird, but I, until recently I never thought of that, but that's true. It's very true. And um, tell us, I, I know we've, we've talked about this before, but you did not go home with your birth parents, did you? No, I did not. Who did you end up going home with? Well, my birth parents um, placed me for adoption, um, but I went home to a wonderful person who is now my legally adopted mother, but at first she was, a, was my foster parent um, up until the age of three. She, she's raised me since three months because she was a foster parent and raised 55 kids in four years. Wow, wow. 55 children. I can't even imagine, plus had two biological children of her own. Amazing. Which is very remarkable. I, I commend my mom a lot for that. I don't sure. know how she did it. Now, are you the only child she adopted? Yes. Oh, so you are very special. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> lucky for that. And we have a, my mom and I have a great bond. That's great. Of that. And, and she's obviously raised you to be a very um, fun-loving, competent young woman. And uh, how did she how did she accomplish that, um, knowing that uh, you had this disability? She well, my mom never, honestly, never saw me as disabled, never treated me differently. Um, I mean, she helped me when I needed it, and you know, it was apparent when it when I needed the help, you know. It was obviously, she did what she had to do, but otherwise, like, she let me grow up like any other kid. Like, I, I had friends growing up, I had a social life, I still do, but I had, you know, I was riding my bike around the complex and <laughs> playing with cars and dump trucks and stuff, and people were like, why do you let your daughter do that? And I was hiking in the woods and all that stuff, and my mom's like, well, I treat her like anybody else. I mean, you know, she's just, I, I don't consider her different because she's blind. Like, that's only gonna deter her if I, see her like that. Sure. That's sure. only going to make her, and, and a lot of parents who have ch children with any disability, they basically they shelter them and it's not good for the child. Even though they may not be doing it out of a mean character, they just don't understand. Right. And it really ends up hurting the child even if the parent doesn't doesn't intend to do that. Right. So. Because we always want to protect our kids. Right. I mean, I got hurt, certainly. I, I've Ran, I, when I was little, I used to run around like I, I could see. And I, ran in, <laughs> I ran through glass and stuff like that. But, I mean, every little kid does that, whether you can see or not. Right. So right. I was just a normal kid. And, and you always thought yourself the, the same way. And, and right. it really gave you a lot of confidence. Um, so 
even though you know you are legally um, blind and uh, they consider that a disability, you don't really consider yourself no. disabled. No, I mean, sure, sir, certainly I need certain accommodations for certain things um, in order to do things the way that other people do, such as even, for example, like using a computer. I need a certain software. I need JAWS, which is the software that I use on my computer that talks, that reads the screen out loud to me so that I can use the keyboard commands. You know, instead of clicking with the mouse, I know key commands mm -hmm. on how to navigate things like the Internet. So I do need accommodations. I do need certain things. But the, the thing that I think about today that is remarkable as well is that there is so much more technology. There's so many things out there for me as opposed to if I was born 50 years ago. Sure, sure. And and the, the it's amazing because you're, you're, how old? You're 20? 22. 22. And um, the idea that you were that small that long ago, um, it, nowadays it's not as, it wouldn't be as big a, big a, a deal. A big a deal, no. But back then, I mean, really, for you to go back, go home within three months actually was amazing in itself. Right, so you for me to even go home at all was even amazing. Yeah. Especially being hooked up to things. They had to hook my head up to things and... Um, my head wasn't growing. I think they had to shave my head because and take to put the, I don't some sort of things in there because they had to, they had to do a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know everything, but, um, so it was pretty amazing. Like how I'm. That's why I, I try to have such a good attitude. I have my days, my my bad days, but we all do. <laughs> yeah, but overall, like when people say to me, "Oh, well, doesn't it suck being blinded?" They try to pity me, like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, you don't need to do that. I don't need to hear that." Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mind, p certainly, people being sympathetic is one thing, but I don't need pity. Right, right. And you want to be treated just like any, any other person, just like your mom treated you. Right, absolutely. My mom forgets, like, she'll, you know, my friends will come over, turn the light on, and she'll be like, well, why don't you turn the light off? And I'll forget, like, I mean, even though I can see the lights, I, I'm so used to, like, right. doing things not turning the light on. Most of the time, like, very seldomly I do. There's certain circumstances where I may, because I do see light and shadow, but... Other than that, I think people just waste electricity because they can. They should be able to. I feel like people should be able to go use the bathroom without turning the light yeah. on. Well, I have <laughs> a news for your mom. We all yell at our kids for not turning the lights yeah, off. I know. I, I, but it's just funny, like and just certain things that people forget, and it's there. They'll say, "Oh, look, it, it, you know, did you see the Christmas tree with the colors? Yeah, I did. They looked great. <laughs> you know, like although I do, I like I said, I do see light, and I and when I was little. I remember that I used to look at the light. I used to play with the ornaments and look at the lights on the tree because I oh, thought the yeah. lights. And I used to play with flashlights too because I could see. I could see the light. Oh, that's neat. So, so um, I know you've said this in the past, but uh, I love hearing it. What are some of the things that you've done that most people would be shocked to know? <laughs> uh, well, like I said, I mean, riding bike. I mean that for, and not even a tandem bike. I've done that too, but just regular bicycle where I could crash into things and fall down, which I did, but most of the time I missed things somehow. I would actually stand up on the pedals and ride the bike. Holy moly. Yeah, it's probably bad. Your guardian angel's working overtime. I'm a little bit smarter now, but um, I've I've bungee jumped. I love roller coasters and things like that. I went to late compounds and bungee jumped with oh a friend my of mine. Gosh. There's no way I would have done that. It was crazy. I love stuff like that. <laughs> if I could go to a place and go on the, the largest roller coaster in the world or skydive I would <laughs> so you have, you have like the thrill of yeah. it. <laughs> oh yeah and then some people say well you can't see it you don't know which is totally ridiculous because I know how I can feel myself going up sure. you know I can and I can feel certainly feel you know yeah. going down or whatever so I certainly know I have an understanding of how, how things and my surroundings probably because I've done a lot of things so I do have an understanding. Well, you should tell people then to try riding a roller coaster with their eyes closed because I think that would be even scarier than riding it with your eyes well, open. People do close their eyes, and I think I think people do that, and they, you know, they. I don't think it helps them. I don't know. No, I Maybe. think it makes it worse. And, and I always <laughs> tell people because I've known other blind people, and they don't do. Some of them don't do that, so it has nothing to do with sight or not. It's just my personality. Yeah, it your has spirit. Nothing to do yeah. With <laughs> So um, I know you've gone to college. Yes, I have. And did you get your degree? I'm working. I'm in the midst. Midst. Um, yeah. I'm, right now I'm doing volunteer work, but my I have two and a half years of college. Wow. I, I was studying psychology. 
Awesome. So I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with that. I really, I love people and I like helping people. I could see myself going in a few directions. Well, that's nice Be to keep your psychology. options open. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm very open-minded. So you say you're volunteering. Yes. And uh, you're volunteering at Birthright, right? Yes, I am. And what are you doing for them? I am doing office work. I'm using um, Mail Merge and uh, Microsoft Excel, I'm doing things like data entry, and I'm also helping writing newsletters and wow. things of that nature. <laughs> that's awesome. So what, what do you want people to know? Um, about uh, people with disabilities, because I know on, on other shows um, we've talked about, um, you know, they're they're now like the March March for Dime or um, uh, yeah March of Dimes have like pioneered a lot of different prenatal testing and um, tried to identify children with different uh, disabilities. And unfortunately, people are using that type of uh, testing and knowledge to then um, abort children that they are told aren't going to be perfect. Of course, Which nobody's I, perfect. <laughs> right, and that's, that's the thing I, I would want parents to know, parents and everybody to know, that if someone's going to have a child, you know, they should even though you never expect your child to be born, you want them to be born and ha you know live a great life, but we have to all realize that there's a chance, anytime anyone has a child, there's a chance that it could have a disability. Sure. And that that child has every right to live just as you do or I do or anybody else does. And they should have a chance, you know, a given life, and we should not think, try to think for them and figure out how they would feel. Right. Right. You know, because we don't know. And you don't know until you're in that situation right. how you would feel. And I really think that a lot of parents just don't know where to go. They don't know resources. They've never met people with disabilities or children or anything, you know. So they need to do the research and reach out to organizations and people that can help them because that in turn will help you deal with your child or your sibling or whatever, whoever, you know, the person is in your family. E even adults who, who maybe have a disability. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's good to have the knowledge um, that you, you may or may not, you know, your child may or may not have a disability, but it's better to use that knowledge, like you say, to do the, to research, do the research to see how you're going to deal with, with um, uh, this child and help this child become the, the best person that they can be. Right. I always thought that there's, I don't think there's enough education as there should be about people with disabilities because people always think, oh, well, I've never encountered it. I probably won't. I really think if there was more education, even like throughout the school systems and start people at a young age, mm -hmm. it'll integrate itself into society. And so people won't, you know, won't be as clueless as to how to deal with it maybe, right, you know, if, right. they're, if they're more educated about it. I think also too, um, uh, I, I know we've talked about in the past that uh, children that are identified in utero with Down syndrome, over 90% of those children are aborted. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's a Sickening, crazy, a crazy statistic. Like and, I can't. And on what they should, what people should know is that there are actually families who are looking to adopt children with Down syndrome. That right. uh, and and. We've known that adoption is such a great option. Both you and I were both adopted, right? And so we would definitely, you know, support that that option because it turns out it's so much better, it's, <laughs> obviously, for the child. It is, and you know, it's okay for a parent to admit that they can't, sure. they just can't raise their child. It's a lot of people say, well, you know, I couldn't do that to my child. I feel I'm doing something wrong, and maybe they don't mean to sound like it but they're actually sounding selfish but they may not realize it but right. if there's a better person out there that can raise their child and certainly there's there's also the other option of open adoption as right. well that people could seek nowadays um, my records were closed growing up but today is a little bit different mm -hmm. um, but you know that's always an option because there's there's a lot of people in this world who can't physically have children sure. or maybe they can but they would still love to adopt absolutely absolutely and um, that's always so much it, it's, it's not there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with admitting to yourself that you are not physically emotionally financially or whatever equipped to raise this child right but there's no reason why you shouldn't lovingly 
then um, place the child for adoption so that somebody who is willing, able to afford, you know, raise that child can. Right, absolutely. Um, I mean, I have met my birth parents and I've built a relationship with my family, but I love the mom that raised me. She's a wonderful person and I'm very glad that my parents made a decision they did because I, I feel if they wouldn't have, I may be a different person today. Sure. I, mean, I don't know, but I think there's a reason for everything, and uh, absolutely. that was a that was a decision for life. For yeah, that, that, that. I mean that that is just so awesome, and and uh, like you said, you have met your birth parents. So um, although you weren't really you weren't um, uh, threatened, I mean you weren't going to be aborted. No, certainly, but um, it's possible. I right, been. right. I'm glad I wasn't. Very glad I was. We are glad too. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's 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 always possible, you know, that uh, women who lovingly place their children for adoption can eventually um, meet those those children and see how well they've turned out. Whereas if a child is a, is aborted, you'll never know. You'll just you'll mm -hmm. just never know. You'll never know. Um, the other thing that kind of uh, weighs on me is that in Massachusetts anyways, we're, we're getting ready to vote on whether or not to have a physician-assisted suicide. And I know a lot of people um, believe that, oh, you know, that that's a great option because if, if I were, you know, uh, you know, capacitated, if I had this disability, if I had that disability, I, I, would, I would really want to kill myself. What do you say to people like that? I think it sounds ridiculous because first of all how do you know how, how you would feel if you're not in that situation and a lot of people with disabilities are actually very happy with yeah. who they are and some are not but you know I I don't know I just think that's ridiculous talk because I mean it certainly is hard to have a disability you certainly go through challenges but you know to say that you, you would want to kill yourself it's just yeah, it's not. I don't think it's right at all. And and I think I think a lot of people, you know, of course, when you're initially faced with a disability, everybody would be depressed. Right. You know, it's it's scary. It's, you go you know, through a process. Yeah, you go through a process. And if if you aren't ever allowed to get through the initial depression, shock, you know, all those different emotions. Um, you'll never get to the point where you can um, learn to live with your disability and flourish. That's true. That's true. And I, I just think that uh, by san state sanctioning, you know, people able to kill themselves, it, it's, 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 it's nuts. It is nuts. I don't understand how people could view it that way, but like I said, you know, people really don't understand disabilities. They think, you know, they don't understand they're not educated enough to understand that there are people with different disabilities. You have to learn certain things, and there's a lot that they can do. You know, and, and you, your example of somebody who has definitely not just overcome your disability, but you have, um, you're thriving. You're you're flourishing. I I do. I try my best to do that, and I try to reach out to other people too, with my disability and with other disabilities or people that have family members with disabilities, because. We all need to connect and I think network. Um, not to be identified by your disability. Like right. I don't like to be identified. You know, I don't have, you know, blind friends because they're blind. But I have blind friends because they're nice people and I enjoy them as people. But networking and supporting one another is mm -hmm. important. Well, and yeah, it's important it's to distinguish the difference because people, you know, they really don't understand. Like they'll ask me, oh, "Are all your friends blind?" No. <laughs> No, I don't, you know, I don't want to be labeled, but at the same time, I, I want to network with them and, you know, educate the rest of the world. Right. So your experience, I know um, you were uh, mainstreamed in school, right? Yes, I was. So, you, and I know you kind of mentioned that uh, you would like to see um, children get education on disabilities. Where would you see um, that introduced? How would, you, how would it be introduced? I just think it should be like a class or integrated somehow in the, in the curriculum. Um, yeah. And it should be mandatory. Like I know that you know, once you get in high school, um, and college, you know, there's electives. But I really think, along with your, you know, your science, your social studies, your 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 general classes that you would take, there should be life skills classes, and that should be one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it's part of life, and 
you may have to someday work with somebody with a, with a disability, even if you don't, you don't have to necessarily know everything about every disability, but at least have an overview or be introduced to things so you're not, so people aren't so intimidated. And yeah. People need to realize that it's okay to ask questions. It's not to be, oh, sh you know, t people talk around me a lot <laughs> and it irritates me. Because you can hear. Because I can hear, and, and because I understand, I'm I'm an intellectual, and I know that people are trying to be, you know, they're trying. They're, it's not most of the time. It's not out of rudeness. It's just they don't know any right. better. What would you tell kids? And if you were, you know, in a classroom of young children, what would you tell them? Well, it would depend on how young. I mean, I've done presentations on like braille and blindness before, and like I said, depending on the age group, depends on what I say, but. I basically just say the same types of things I'm saying now, um, maybe just in different ways. Um, just the general information about like my situation or my blindness, and then to explain that there's all you know all different types, you know, of vision loss, and you know I would do the same thing if I was teaching about other disabilities. Mm -hmm. I would have the knowledge and I would give them information about it, and you know let them ask questions and let them be around like a hands-on, like be around people with disabilities. And I think it's great that nowadays we are mainstreamed. M uh, many of us are mainstreamed. And how was that experience? Um, I know in high school, you know, kids can be so mean over all sorts of different um, differences. You know, that right. when kids are different, there's always some kind of, I don't know if there's fear or just jealousy or who knows. But Probably both. They're mean. <laughs> Hey, did you have any like experiences with bullies? I've I've had a few. I had one when I was growing up. I don't even know if he'd even had anything to do with my disability, but he used to call me stupid and I don't know all kinds of idiot. You know, little, little kid childish stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've actually was very lucky. I always had many different groups of friends. I still do today. I have all different friends, all different ages from different places now, but. And I luckily always did, but there was always a few. There was a couple instances that I remember. One, <laughs> this is funny, when I was in high school, um, I was coming back, I had like a study hall or something. I was in the middle, like I think I just came back up from lunch or something. I, I can't remember, I think I was a senior, and uh, I was coming up from lunch, and I didn't have an actual class, I just had like a study hall. So, you know, I could be a little bit late. So I'm walking down the hallway, and I hear these kids talk, and then they're like, yeah, you know, she's, I think she's skipping class, you know, like, she's blind, you know, she thinks because she can't see that she, you know, she could just do all this stuff and skip class, like, everybody so else like has to go to class. Or like, I'm yeah. special or something. And, you know, I'm listening to this, and I'm laughing because, you know, here they are in the hallway saying this, and I turn around, and I'm like, excuse me, but I'm at, this is funny, but I'm like, I'm not actually skipping class. I have, you know, whatever it is. And these two, they ran down the hallway as fast as they could. Like, they bolted. Like, they were just, like, like I, I, like, I don't know what I did to them, but they were not expecting me to respond. I think that's what it is with people. They do. I stand up for myself. Yeah, you're not a shrinking violet. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Like, I couldn't. I don't know what it was. And they must have thought they were special because they weren't in class. They weren't exactly, and I'm like, wow, you know, you're, where are you? You're an underclassman. You're a young. I'm I'm a senior here. <laughs> I, I can be I can be here, or I can go across the street, and you can't. You can sneak across, but you're gonna get caught that way. <laughs> well, you're probably very young looking because you you look so I young look now. Young. So they probably didn't realize that you were a senior. <laughs> probably not, but I I just thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> yeah, they were totally busted. Yeah, they were totally. It was it was totally busted, but so you had you've always had very good experiences most of the because time. Yeah, because of my personality, and I mean I try to open up to people. I I think a lot of kids, and it's not their, you know, sometimes, not not to be mean or anything, but some people with disabilities, you know, they they make it for themselves. Like, you gotta grow and learn to just try to be more open to people and try to be more socially acceptable, and that's where I. My mom, I think, you know, she started me off to be like any other child. Right. So you don't want people to identify you by your disability, so you don't identify yourself right. by your disability. I don't. I mean, there's a time and a place where, of course, I let people know, hey, I can't, you know, I can't yeah. see. Um, but I don't like, like, people sometimes will refer to me, oh, the blind girl, you know. 
I don't mind someone going, oh, this is, you know, my friend April, okay, she's blind. Like, I do want people to tell people so that they know. Right. But there's, you do understand that it's the, the distinction, it's, there's a certain way about it. And You're I'm April even, 1st, yeah. I'm April 1st, right, I'm not the blind girl. Like, there, there's people, I have to correct them on that because there was another time I was walking down the hallway and somebody says, oh, you walked into the blind girl and I said, my name's April, I do have a name. They're like, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm just telling you, you don't need to be like that apologetic over it. It's not a big deal. But, you know, so I have to tell people. Just like they could have walked into anybody. Yeah, and <laughs> you don't, and another thing is they don't need to whisper on me like, oh, she's blind, you know. Like, <laughs> like that type of thing. They do that too. Like, I don't know that I can't, like, it's like, you know, that I don't realize that I can't see. Right. Or, you know, it's things like, th there's little things like that that people do all the time that I constantly have to educate. And I don't mind because I want people to know. Right, right. But it does get annoying sometimes. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to do that, but. But, it, I mean, yeah. it gives, does give you an opportunity to then help them grow right. and understand. And um, you probably do have a better sense of hearing, so whispering is really futile. Not a better sense, but a more <laughs> in tune. I know how to use it. I yeah. have, you know, it's not better than other people. Right. It's just more in tune. Right, right. When it, when I, I mean, I can be selective hearing just like anybody else, though, you know? <laughs> but pe when people go, like if I'm in a restaurant and people go, what does she want? When I'm, and when the other person, um, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I want this. Like, you can talk to me. Right. Deal with me. It's just like going in a store and I want to buy something and I'm with someone and the, the cashier hands the change back to them. Mm. which is totally inappropriate. And again, I have to tell them, don't do that. Now, do you ever feel that somebody is going to rip you off? It has happened to me, actually. And I and I call them on it, and I got it taken care of. Um, I was in college. I, ho I ordered some Chinese food, and I... Uh, and it was... I blame myself for it, for not paying attention. I mean, it could happen to anybody, you know? Yeah. And I just... I gave it, I don't even remember what the change amount was. I gave him the money and then I realized, oh, geez, you know, I didn't get my change back. And so, I, and I figured, you know, this guy knew I couldn't see. He probably did it on purpose because he probably knew, like, hmm, you know. So what I did was I called the place and I said, I ordered this and this and, you know, I paid this amount and I did not get my change back. And the same guy who... I bought the food from came to me and gave me my change back because wow. I, you know, I called the restaurant on it, you know. But I partially blame myself for it because I, you know, I wasn't totally paying attention. That's but he right. still shouldn't have done that, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I mean, th there's a bunch of different things that you know we can all learn from um, others with disability, and um, I'm really glad that uh, you could come and uh, Thank share. Thank you very much. And I just want to, you know, emphasize the importance of life and these experiences that I'm letting people know can make it connected to life and if you, you know, if parents can give their child life, it's best for them and it gives the world a chance to get to know someone who is a wonderful person. Absolutely, absolutely and and uh, you just definitely show us that, uh, you know, people can and do overcome their disabilities and, and uh, flourish to be wonderful contributing human beings that we would definitely be remiss to, to not have around with us. <laughs> thank, well, thank you so you. much for joining us and well, sharing with us. thank you for us. having me. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope that you've learned something. Realize that no matter what happens to you in life, you can always get through it, especially if you have faith in yourself and in God and the, in your family and friends. And uh, we want you to realize that when you look in the mirror the next time, yours too is the face of pro-life. Please join us again next time.